due to the uh, temperature, if you would like to take your jackets off tonight, uh, feel free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. John Jarvis representing Twyford. And Carl Lauren from Bournemouth and Whitegrass. Thank you very much, members. And we are supported and advised by a variety of professional council officers. And now I'll ask those officers to introduce themselves, starting on my far right. I'm Carl Lauren, I'm co-op to the committee. I'm Barry Severin, giving legal advice to this evening. I'm Justin Servey, Indeed Officer for Development Management. Uh, I'm Chris Eastern, Service Manager for Highways and Working. Thank you very much. Uh, planning officers presenting tonight's applications, they're sat on my far left, and I will introduce those people at the appropriate time. Right, the procedure. I can put this closer to me. I don't know I can do any more in terms of noise. Um, it's possible. Did you get one of the DSOs? Did you get one of the... Did you get one of the... I'm going to carry on though because I'm just doing the, the introduction. This is a quasi judicial committee with formal set procedures and conduct. Firstly, the planning officer will present each application. Then I will call in turn only those who are pre registered to speak. Please come forward to the table. The microphone is controlled by the grey button on the base. The time limit of three minutes for each category of speaker will be strictly enforced. So please ensure you get your key points across within your allotted time. Members of the committee are interested in the quality of what you have to say, not for how long that you speak for. And so I do emphasize again that only those who are pre-registered to speak may do so. Following the planning officer's presentation and the comments of registered speakers, the planning committee members will consider a question and seek clarification for the application and hopefully reach a decision which may or may not agree with the planning officer's recommendation. Finally, a reminder, the local planning authority's role is to determine any valid planning application using local and national planning policy. Our role is not to suggest alterations to schemes, whether they are a good idea, whether they are too costly, or whether there are alternative uses. Thank you very much, and now I'll um, move on to the agenda. I'm thinking it's sounding a little different now. Yes. You can hear it better? Yes. That's good. So thank, thank you for that. Right. Apologies. Looking around the, uh, the committee, I can see there are no apologies as everyone is here. Does anyone need to declare an interest? Wayne. <coughs> yes. Quite enough. In, uh, the application for uh, Highland Stone Lane in Hearst. Um, I've listed that, that's in my ward, on behalf of the parish council. Although I'd like to make it clear, however, that the, um, I will 
be open-minded and listen to all of the uh, speakers, including the officers, and then I will make my decision. That's too loud. <coughs> it needs turning back, otherwise. Thank you, Wayne. Are there any applications to be deferred or withdrawn? Uh, there's none, Chair. Thank you very much. We'll move on then to the first application, which is agenda item 14 on page 5. It's the land between Thames Valley Business Park and Napier Road. It's a full application for a segregated fast track public transport, pedestrian and cycle bridge and viaduct. A river span of 59.5 metres and a land span of 316. It's before the committee, but it's a major application. The committee did go on a site visit on Friday, and I shall now hand over to the case officer, Graham Moore. The full description is as per the slide, but to elaborate further, the scheme is for a public transport link between Napier Road in Reading and Broken Brow Roundabout within Woking Borough. Specifically, this would be for buses, cyclists and pedestrians. The scheme comprises of a road and supporting structure, including a viaduct section, a bridge over the River Kennet and an embankment within Reading Borough. Additional works to footpaths in the area and landscaping as a result of the scheme are also proposed. On the road itself, a pedestrian and cycleway are maintained throughout. However, the two-way bus carriageway reduces to a single lane over the proposed bridge and buses will be controlled by signals at this point. It is proposed that the scheme links to the road also proposed by the Thames Valley Park Park and Ride, which was granted planning permission in November 2016. Confirmation, the application site crosses the boundary between Reading and Woking Boroughs, and as a result, the same application has been considered by Reading Borough Council. Their planning committee resolved to grant planning permission, subject to conditions and legal agreement on the 30th of May. Similarly, the recommendation for the current application is also subject to a section 106 legal agreement and the draft heads of terms are set out in paragraph 12 of the main report. Also noted in paragraph 17, the application includes the submission of an environmental statement. The main adopted uh, policy documents for Wokium are the core strategy and managing, managing development delivery local plan. A summary of the policies impacted by the scheme are included in the report of paragraphs 20 and 21. But specifically related to the pro proposal is policy CP10, which highlights the point 10, one of the improvements to the strategic transport network is the provision of an express bus service, or MRT, along the A4 and A329 corridors. MDD policy CC08 reiterates this and highlights that the area will be safeguarded on the proposed map. It should be noted that Reading have similar policy for support for the scheme, which has been in current and previous policy documents. The scheme should be viewed in a wider context in terms of strategic transport. Both Reading and Wakeham have planned development taking place and for the future, with significant residential expansion. As a result, there will be increased pressure on existing infrastructure within development plan period. In respect of the scheme, there is specific provision for pedestrians and cyclists. Currently, those moving through the site to use the Thames towpath, which is shared between these users, is unlit and susceptible to flooding. <coughs> The introduction of the scheme would help provide some benefit to these users in mitigating these issues. However, the main aim of the scheme is with regard to public transport and specifically bus use. Currently, there is significant congestion and therefore pollution at London Road Reading, which impacts on public transport services in terms of journey times and reliability. The scheme would increase capacity on the road network by allowing certain bus services and alternative routes into and out of Reading, which would help with both journey times and reliability. It's considered this would improve the attractiveness of public transport and help with the modal shift from the private car to public transport. There is also the potential for new services to be provided in the future. As such, the aim of the scheme is to help influence current levels of congestion, but also cater for the planned growth within the two boroughs. Additionally, the scheme is part of a wider transport network of planned MRT routes and park and ride facilities, which would help to improve urban connectivity. It's also considered there will be increased access to employment opportunities which would help economic growth. The main element of the scheme within Wokium is the viaduct section and then the bridge over the River Kennet. The viaduct would rise at a low gradient to meet the height of the bridge and would be supported by single flared columns. 
The road itself would be above the steel beam running the length of the section and would also have railings either side. Lighting of the road in this section will be achieved by LED strips in the railings. Although elevated from the ground, the road would be close to the Thames towpath. At the closest point, additional river planting has been proposed with short stay mooring platforms to help increase the sense of space. Underneath the viaduct, it is proposed to create a marsh habitat which would, be, would help with openness but discourage antisocial behaviour. The bridge section has been designed as a seamless continuation of the viaduct and would not impact navigation of the Kennet River. It would also allow views of the Grade 2 listed bridge beyond. Uh, this is a photo montage from the applicant showing the viaduct se section within Wagen and highlights the openness between the structure achieved by its height and the single flared columns. This is an artist's impression from the applicant showing the bridge section over the Kennet and highlights the views <coughs> of the listed bridge behind. This is an artist's impression from the applicant showing the viaduct section again and has highlights the use of the towpath and the mooring platforms. <coughs> The character of the site derives from the relationship between the river, the dense tree lines, and the railway embankment leading to the bridge over the Kennet. There are other land uses nearby the site, although these are not easily visible at any point. As a result, the area is relatively green and considered to be a landscape buffer from the more built up areas within the two barrels. Through the introduction of the scheme, there would be a detrimental impact on the landscape character. The viaduct section in particular would have an urbanising impact on the area and the site would go through irrecoverable transformation as a result. This would be most apparent where the road would be closest to the river, however it is acknowledged that river planting and mooring platforms have helped in mitigating this. It is acknowledged that the site falls into the definition of open space as per the MPPF. However, the site was safeguarded for transport purposes within adopted planning policy documents, and therefore this loss of open space was already envisaged as part of the development plan for the borough. As a result, no concerns regarding loss of this space are raised in policy terms. Some comments have been raised regarding appropriation of this space by the Council, however this will be carried out under a separate legal process which does not impact upon the consideration. The site is within flood zones 2 and 3B and therefore at high risk from flooding. As per the MPF, MPPF, schemes are required to pass the sequential and exception test in determining if the site is suitable for development with regards to flooding, the scheme part of both of these tests. Specifically, it is proposed to provide direct level-for-level -level compensation by scoops within the ground, which would mitigate the impact of the scheme. The EA do not object to this, subject to conditions as set out in the report. Although there is some fragmentation of habitats and impacts on protected species, these are mitigated for. It is likely translocation of certain species would be required and also the installation of bat boxes along the site. Some concerns have been raised regarding whether or not the scheme achieves a net gain in biodiversity. However, since the revision to the proposal, the river planting in particular helps the scheme achieve the same. In terms of technical highway matters, the highways officer does not raise any objection, subject to conditions. The width of the road and the lighting design within the railing is considered acceptable. Additionally, the traffic impact on the broken brow in roundabout is not considered to cause concern. In terms of the use of the road being specifically for certain vehicles, this will be controlled through a legal agreement and monitored on site through the use of cameras. Although there is a loss of trees across the site as a whole, within Waking Borough, the number of replacement trees will be greater than those removed. The tree planting has been designed to augment existing tree provision so as to help mitigate the impact of the scheme. The revisions to the scheme also mean one of the two willows within Wankin Borough would be retained. Specific tree protection methods regarding construction would be controlled by condition. One of the aims of the scheme is to reduce air pollution, which would be achieved by the reduction in traffic. It is noted this factor focuses primarily on Reading Borough and the impact on the road. Although it's difficult to quantify within Wankin Borough, the Environmental Health Officer has not objected to the scheme subject to conditions. The heritage asset near the site uh, is the Grade 2 listed railway and attached accommodation bridge. As no part of the scheme would attach to these, there is not considered to be any physical harm to them. However, it is noted the proposal would result in harm to the setting of the heritage asset due to blocking some of the views achievable, and this would be contrary to the policy TB24 of the MDD. 
In addition, a non-designated heritage asset, a mosaic regarding the confluence of the Thames and the Kennet rivers, will be preserved and relocated on site after construction. The Council's archaeology advisor states that very few surveys have been carried out in the area. However, the impact of the proposal could be mitigated by site investigation, which is secured by condition. As highlighted in the report, the scheme calls with some policies but conflicts with others. The proposal would detrimentally alter the environment of the site due to urbanisation. However, there are social and economic benefits arising from the proposal due to improved public transport facilities. As such, whilst the environmental concerns are valid, the transport benefits of the scheme are wide-reaching and therefore have greater weight in the planning elements. In the members' update, there is a change to the report in terms of the condition numbers which changed to letters due to an error in that the document. There is also clarification regarding tree removal which has changed slightly following network rail and park and ride clearance. There is also clarification provided on a number of items, including how alternative schemes should be considered. Finally, an additional 18 letters of objection have been received, which are summarised for the committee. As such, subject to the conditions set out in the officer report and the completion of Section 106 Leave Agreement, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Just before we move on, then, can you just re emphasise it is only at the Wokingham side that we're doing it specifics of that, although we can consider the whole, as it were, that people just. Yes, so members should have a consideration of the scheme as a whole and then its wider impact and then the strategic need. But we are assessing the application within Woking Borough. Therefore, you cannot say a reason for refusal on a site specific impact that is occurring within Reading. Thank, thank you very much. Right, the first registered speaker then is Councillor Bill Luck representing Early Town Council. Would you like to come forward? Town Council who have objected to these proposals on a number of counts. One, the design of the large bridge and viaduct is unsightly. We have concerns over the visual impact on the National Thames Park and the natural environment of the River Thames. Whilst MPF, MPPF paragraph 65 does encourage sustainable infrastructure, we do not believe that it is of the required good design to mitigate its impact on the existing townscape. We also believe these proposals do not meet the aims of MPPF paragraph 17 which requires developments to secure high quality design and a good standard of amenity for all users of land and contribute to conserving and enhancing the natural environment. Two, we are concerned about the loss of wildlife habitat and we draw your attention to NPPF Para 109 that states the planning system should contribute to and enhance the natural and local environment by protecting and enhancing the natural and local environment uh, planning landscapes, minimising impacts on biodiversity and providing a net gain we believe these proposals fail to achieve these aims. We are concerned that the Western Embankment approach to the bridge impedes the floodplain, which is in flood zone 3, requiring flood compensation to be provided. This compensation is to be located within the strip of woodland between Tesco and the river. We believe resulting in a loss of habitat and a reduction in the tree screening of the bulk of the store being viewed from the river. Four, we believe that the viaduct on the working side of the River Kennet is too close to the river, is not screened and will be prominent. At its closest point, the viaduct will only be about five metres from the river edge, about the length of the parking space, not enough room for landscape treatment, and at that point, about five metres above ground level, the height of the eaves to a two story house. MPPF Para 9 states that sustainable development should seek positive improvements in the quality of the built and natural environment, achieving net gains for nature. In addition, policy TB21 requires that proposed developments <coughs> must demonstrate how they have addressed a character assessment of their setting. In this case, through the Thames Corridor. We are of the view that these proposals do not demonstrate how they retain or enhance the existing character of features that contribute to the landscape. In addition, we believe the proposed bridge over the mouth of the River Kent will adversely impact on the setting of the Grade 2 listed Horseshoe Bridge, contrary to policy TB24, which seeks to enhance the setting of designated heritage assets. It would appear that there is no policy justification for this major development. Whilst policy CP10 deals with improvements to the strategic transport network, it lists specific projects and does not refer to this transit. 
Therefore, the Early Town Council asks that you refuse this application on the grounds of severe impact on the setting of the Thames. Its impact on a Grade 2 listed structure, its failure to enhance the biodiversity of the area, the impact of the flood mitigation on the woodland streams near the river, and a lack of a specific policy justification. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, ne next we have the two residents, Tamsin Morphy and Carl Emerson Dan. I believe we're going to share the, the three minutes, so the, the buzzer will go after one and a half minutes. And I'm thinking, Carl, you don't want to be filmed. Uh, yes, thank you. That's right. Um, Mr. Chairman, Tim Alton, uh, and committee members. Uh, unfortunately, I strained my back badly two hours ago. So, uh, I, uh, I can't do my speech, uh, but um, the um, um, my <laughs> uh, sore. They have my full full support in okay. this matter, and uh, all I can do right now is to hand out uh, my my objection was my objection uh, was. Well, you read this. You read the speaking, or you're not. I'm I'm not speaking. I'm just mentioning that my objection is okay. based on planning. Thank so you. can I hand you those out? Okay, yes. thank you. So I'll leave it to the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to wait while we have these handed out then we'll start you you have three minutes. Samson Morphy is speaking on behalf of the large group of concerned residents who strongly object to the scheme. The MRT will ruin the visual immunity of the Thames Riverside in early. There's some slides up there, by the way. The Thames Path National Trail is currently enjoyed by runners, walkers, cyclists, adults, and children. The MRT will be built right alongside it, bringing traffic noise and pollution. Next slide. It will ruin a valued green open space at Kennet Mouth, contravening national and local policies on landscape features and open space, and adversely affecting the physical and mental health of local people. It is particularly cruel that people living in one of the most densely populated areas of East Reading would be the most affected by this scheme. There is no offer of replacement land access, contravening national planning policy framework on provision of green space. Next slide. Less intrusive alternatives have not been properly considered contravening environmental regulations. For example, Dr. Walker of Southampton University has proposed a limited road charging scheme on the A4 in East Reading to reduce congestion. Using number plate recognition that's already in use to monitor bus lanes, the capital cost would be around 31K compared to a 24 million pound price tag of the MRT. Next slide. The MRT will devastate wildlife, plants and trees at Kennet Mouth and Coldwood. The minimum number of trees to be felled is 766, and that has been acknowledged by the applicant themselves. Okay? Only 77 trees will be replaced, that's just 10% of the overall total felled. Next slide. In addition, there is no serious plan to mitigate the impact on grass snakes and slowworms, both protected species, and there are other protected species at the site. Next slide. <coughs> Dr. Sam Cartwright of Berkshire Buckinghamshire Wildlife Trust strongly objects to the revised scheme, noting that the application understates ecological impacts and will result in a clear net loss of biodiversity. Next slide. The traffic's been falling on the London Road in the last few years, as you can see from those graphs. Likewise, uh, the MRT will actually increase traffic on the London Road. That is what's shown in the application. Likewise, the A4 and A3290 will see an increase in car journeys as people from outside the area use the MIT. This will worsen pollution and congestion for the people who are living. Next slide. So I ask councillors, knowing the destruction that the MRT will cause for plants, people and animals, how can you, in all good conscience, agree to this wholesale destruction of a beautiful and beloved area of our riverside, especially when more effective and less environmentally damaging alternatives could be tried first at a fraction of the cost of the MRT. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you very much. We have, 
have uh, Scott Richards, the agent, if you'd like to come forward. The East MRT scheme is a key part of a long-standing commitment to deliver high-quality segregated mass transit network for the Reading and Woking area. The project will enable a significant increase in bus capacity to and from the east of Reading, helping relieve existing problems, making it difficult to attract more passengers to public transport. It will not only link the key hubs of Reading Town Centre and the station with the new park and ride being built now at Thames Valley Park, but also provide rapid connections to existing buses serving Woodley, Greenash, Triangle, Park and Ride, Heathrow, Rail, Air, Woking and Van Bratton. 80 bus services will use this uh, section in the peak hour. The scheme is a long established element of an area wide strategy within Wokingham and Reading to deliver sustainable economic growth and much needed housing. It's identified in Wokingham's core strategy in local plan and local transport plan and land to deliver the scheme has been safeguarded for that purpose. The scheme will provide a new, safe, segregated pedestrian and cycle link between Thames Valley Park and Reading, uh, more resilient to poor weather conditions. The scheme is primarily funded through the Thames Valley Berkshire LEP, so it's been through a rigorous um, Department of Transport compliant Green Book Economic and Environmental Process, uh, and has been found with a strong strategic case and high value for money. Alternatives were considered as part of that appraisal. Um, we're conscious the design is a very sensitive setting, so it was taken through an independent South East Design Review panel process. Uh, you've heard that it will be single track for buses, so it's been narrowed down where it can be uh, with a slim profile. In addition, the overhead power lines will be removed from the section, and there will be a soft edge to the river and the embankments proposed. Uh, the feedback from the original scheme consultation has led to further changes with a, a reduction in width pinch point, changing to single column support instead of two columns, so they're three metres away from the towpath at ground level. A new marginal shelf in the river, agreed with the Environment Agency, and low level right, uh, lighting in the rails um, at the um, road level. There will be new mooring platforms as well as a marginal shelf, and a managed wetland structure beneath the, uh, stru the biodiversity structure. Mm -hmm. A regrettable impact is the loss of trees, as you've heard. Um, 36 individual classified trees will be lost, along with 22 tree groups, um, and those amount to about 0.116 hectares, but there will be 3.65 hectares of enhanced um, planting and scrubland replacement, along with uh, 81 new trees. There are no grade A trees lost, and the alignment allowed a um, sensitive protected willow tree to be uh, saved in the scheme. There will be no loss of flood storage and there will be an increase in biodiversity which has been checked and agreed with the Environment Agency. So the scheme is a much needed and high priority part of the transport network. It will connect into a much wider public network providing future on travel opportunities to accommodate growth. There are no principal alternatives and where the scheme has a potentially negative impact I believe we work very hard to minimise and mitigate in terms of reduced trips, new planting, habitat enhancement, and a safer environment for pedestrians outside. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay. We now have the two ward councillors. We've got so Councillor Shahid Yunis. If you'd like to go back to your seat, Councillor Shahid Yunis, and we have Councillor Andy Croy. You have three minutes to share between you, so it will go at one and a half minutes. Shahid, you were the first person I believe to register. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have two associations with this area of the application area which will be impacted. One as a, a local councillor, also area under this council, and, and also as a resident as well, living only five minutes away. I'm not going to repeat the arguments which have been put here, which have been by very eloquently by our, our uh, town clerks and, and the local residents. My the recommendation to the committee is basically based on the environmental reasons which have been highlighted to refuse this application. This is highly treasured, highly valued, highly used part of the borough, a beautiful part of the borough. I'm sure the committee has been there recently and it's, it's, it's used by thousands of people on a regular basis as a leisurely walk, as a cyclist, and it's, it's a beautiful part of the borough. And we want to treasure that, we want to safeguard it, 
and, 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 and by clearly having this uh, MRT scheme going through it, it will, uh, as recognized by the officers, it is irreparably, it will damage the, um, uh, the area for, for the long term. So that is my recommendation. Also, I, I understand the both sides of the argument, the economic loss which is doing to the uh, area, but also the environmental damage as well. My, uh, just, uh, my uh, views or, or uh, reservation is purely on the, on the environmental side for the reasons which I've highlighted, and because of the time shortage, is no, there's no time for me to go through that. However, if my committee is to be minded, and hopefully that won't be the case, I hope that committee will apply the strongest, stringent, uh, uh, sort of uh, restriction to so make sure that the, miti uh, the environmental impact is mitigated. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Andy Croy. <coughs> you have one and a half minutes as well. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the application must be refused because the 2010 Working and Borough Core Strategy has no provision for the building of a major new road in this area. The 2010 Core Strategy on page 51 provides for high quality express bus services or a mass rapid transport uh, transit scheme in this corridor. This scheme is simply a road. It is not a bus service, it is a road. It is not a mass rapid transport scheme and has none of the characteristics of a mass rapid transport scheme. An MRT is typically a light railway moving large volumes of people. This scheme provides no evidence of either. There is no railway of any sort and no evidence of any material volume of people being moved by the scheme. Why is this important? The application must be dependent on fitting in with the borough's core strategy before any other planning application can be entertained. If the application is not consistent with the core strategy, then approval by this committee may be subject to legal appeal, as the committee will have approved an application for which there is no basis in the core strategy. In order to seem, and I repeat, seem compliant with the core strategy, the application has had to appropriate the term MRT from both the Wokingham core strategy and the Reading spatial and design strategy. In both these documents, the implication is that the MRT is an MRT in the generally accepted sense of the word, and not in the sense of a road for some buses. If the scheme is approved, we face the prospect of the borough barristers arguing with barristers of the scheme's opponents over the definition of a mass rapid transit scheme. Thank you we don't much. need barristers to tell us this. Thank you very much. <laughs> That is all the uh, registered speakers, but I, I would just like the officers to come back on those questions that have been um, brought forward by the speakers. I put them in um, several sections, so I'm going to take each section at a time. So, um, the, the first one is loss of wildlife habitats. No extra green space is being provided. How many trees? on the Woking Borough side have been removed and how many have been planted. And if you could tell us about the protection of the, um, of the species, what, what's in place. So in terms of loss of wildlife habitat, as acknowledged in your report, yes, there, like I said, there's fragmentation of habitats um, as a result of the scheme going through the site. The council's ecologist has assessed that and is uh, not objecting to the scheme subject to conditions. So it would be very difficult, I think, to substantiate a reason for refusal and to go against uh, the council's ecologist on that point. Um, point being that they have done a proper assessment of the site and the ecologist has assessed it and is not objecting to it. In terms of green space, um, the site is essentially reserved for this use is protected in, in policy documents. So at the point that we adopted the core strategy in the MDD, we uh, accepted that there was going to be a loss of the space at that point and that the strategic 
um, return of the borough and in part the development plan that was acceptable and what we felt that was needed. Uh, in terms of trees in Wokingham, there's an update in the members' updates um, just to clarify in terms of since the report uh, went to print that there's been some removal through network rail and park and ride site clearance. Um, and as such, 14 trees are being removed uh, from Wokingham uh, Borough and then 37 trees are being planted. Uh, in terms of protected species, again, this has been assessed by the Council's ecologist. Um, where required, translocation is going to occur and that will be secured through the legal agreement. Uh, and then there are bat boxes uh, proposed as well throughout the scheme. And again, there's another condition, uh, the landscape ecological mitigation uh, plan, which will deal with those kind of matters and will be subject to further discussions with the Council's ecologist. The, the speaker actually mentioned slow worms, and you've just mentioned bats. I believe slow worms are possibly one of the ones to be translocated. Okay, um, okay, thank you. Right, the next section of questions of points mm. were based really on being unsightly, the, vi the visual impact on the two bridges, um, the character of the area not being retained, the viaduct too prominent. Yes. That, that's, that's that section. Does somebody want to get that? Yes, yes. <laughs> She's trying to find it. take the uh, impact on the bridges first. Um, so the scheme has been designed to try and maintain views uh, through underneath the bridge over Kennet and allow you to see the uh, original uh, railway bridge and then in particular the arches, uh, which is quite a key part of its design. It is acknowledged that there will be uh, blocking off views of the railway bridge and the attached accommodation bridge um, and that is uh, stated in the report. In terms of that impact, um, it, it's not considered to be substantial in terms of the MPPF which uh, requires you to mitigate against substantial harm. However, our local policy TB24 does state that any harm uh, to a heritage asset should be mitigated against. So ultimately, yes, there is some harm to the setting of the uh, Grade 2 structure, um, but you have to balance that against the wider <coughs> benefits of the proposal. In terms of the impact on the wider area, um, as was highlighted, this scheme has uh, been reviewed by an independent design panel. Um, it's been subject to significant uh, discussion between uh, Reading and Working Councils and the applicant. Um, we have certainly tried to achieve something that fits as well as it can into the, uh, into the area. As noted in, in the report, yes, there is uh, harm to the environmental side and indeed the landscape character. Again, as I put in the planning balance, you have to weigh that harm uh, against the wider transport benefit and in this instance, we are placing more weight on the transport benefits against that environmental harm. Okay. Okay. Right. The, the next section then um, was the, the alternative suggestions not uh, reviewed thoroughly. Um, traffic's declining when you're looking at the figures and this road possibly could encourage more traffic into the area. And the final one in this section is um, what was mentioned about the 210 core strategy that this is just a road and it's not an MRT um, solution. Um, well, I'll just kind of work backwards, I think, just picking up on the core strategy point um, under CP10, it, the, the reference to it is actually high quality express bus service or mass rapid transit. Um, so, in this sense, it's kind of, I guess not necessarily semantics, but what we call it, the, the feature of the function of the road is to carry passengers, and obviously one of the definitions is to 
carry larger volumes of public uh, of passengers over public transport, which uh, effectively is what this route is providing from to the Park and Ride through to Reading along the A4. Um, the route itself, uh, obviously, it's in, identified to increase public transport journey times through that section and to obviously remove them from the main passage of uh, vehicles along that section of the A4. Um, in terms, just picking up on the flows, I think basically from the data that's obviously been provided, there is, there has been some obviously decline since 2007 through to about 10, which then at that point has kind of plateaued uh, and pretty much been stable from 2010 through to kind of present day. Um, on that, can't explain why the slight reduction was obviously at the time, however there are delays on that section of the road with large queues at either end. Typically, um, there could be a change in the network that would have caused for that to have plateaued out and for that road to have found its kind of natural level for people to have found the journey that they actually undertake through that section. The benefits of removing the bus and putting them onto this um, service is in line with how the council is focusing on its borough wide journey sustainability. Uh, Reading are uh, providing an MRT, obviously, through to the other side down the A33, and this forms part of a larger picture which uh, congestion is. Half, I guess, everyday life for some parts of um, the country, particularly the southeast. There is some in the, obviously our borough, um, which obviously we have to live with and try to obviously progress and identify improved um, ways of delivering sustainable travel and getting people to and from areas in alternative modes of the government. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Look at reviewing the alternative. <coughs> Uh, I'd refer members to the update, uh, but specifically I'll just read some of it. Whilst alternatives in the environmental statement and those making representations are in principle material considerations, the weight attached to them is for the decision maker to decide. Having considered the alternatives proposed, they are considered to be unworkable, e.g. due to construction costs, or do not demonstrate they are in isolation able to provide the same level of benefit as the proposal. Thank you very much. Right, the, the last one that I picked up was the flooding. I think the reference to the flooding was over by Tesco's, unless I got that wrong, which isn't what we're considering. No, not exactly. So the flooding mitigation is uh, in part, yes, within the Reading Borough. Um, it's proposed that that is agreed through the Section 106 legal agreement uh, to basically mitigate the scheme in that sense. The EA have been uh, in discussion with the applicant for some time on this point uh, and have reached a point where they no longer object to the scheme. Okay, thank you very much. Right, to, uh, just in case you've not been to one of the planning committees before, <coughs> I will now be opening it up to the members to ask questions and they most certainly can look at those things I've, that you people have already mentioned and I brought up. They can go into more depth on those and we can hear some other answers. But, we go now to the, the final ward member to go first, which is Councillor Carl Duran. Thank you, Chair. Um, I kind of want to pick up on a point that um, my colleague, Councillor Croy, just brought up, which I think was sort of half answered. Um, so I'll ask the question straight, but this is not a mass rapid transit system, is it? <coughs> Google for this um, when I first heard this with an MRT to walk. Um, there are lots of MRTs around the world. They are all light rail or rail, multiple lines, multiple stations. There's not a bus in sight, basically, is my kind of thought. So I'm kind of conflicted with this idea that it's, it's called a mass rapid transit. I mean, I got the impression of what you said a moment ago that this is high quality express bus services. Well, that's fine if that's, if that's the case. Um, so then my question is where are the high quality express bus services? What buses will we running on? Well, I think in terms of, I'm, I'm kind of assuming we kind of agreed that regardless of the name, it provides obviously the feature to, so whether it's an MRT or High Express, uh, MRT is obviously the name that has been given to it by the project being delivered by Reading, Reading mm -hmm. delivering MRT down the A33, etc. So that name is kind of carried on through in terms of our core strategy. It mentions MRT or a high quality express <coughs> busway. Um, in terms of what well, it's being delivered. The Reading buses are one of the key providers currently in this area. We've got a, a, an increase in services being provided across 
Um, this borough and Reading, where it's obviously there's been a decline in the southeast and the rest of the country. Um, their buses are obviously of high quality. They're running on gas or obviously other um, sustainable functions. Most of them have um, real-time battery information and obviously Wi-Fi facilities. So the buses are much better quality than we've had previously. In terms of the service and the functions being delivered, the journey times are obviously the key function that's being delivered here. In terms of what it looks like, that's something that I leave to my planning colleagues um, to, um, to look at. I obviously just uh, look and assess, or my team look and assess, obviously, the function of what it is and how it delivers and the benefits and sustainable benefits that we're looking forward to as part of the, part of the council. Okay. Just, just to make a little point, really, um, it's not relevant to us because it's in RBC's local transport plan, but um, their local transport plan does refer to the mass rapid transit and makes it clear that it's a rail system. Um, it talks about uh, mass rapid transit will be a completely new or hybrid public transport system which would complement the existing public transport services. It would require dedicated space on some of the streets in the centre, including parts of the IDR. So it's clear that in that local plan, it was a, a system, a rail system. Oh, that's great, fabulous. But what is it in Woking? What, what's our, what are we saying? What's the definition of MRT uh, in, in Wokingham? And in terms of, of, of bus services, um, also in their transport statement, Reading's, for this application, um, it refers to a, a working group that, that they did with Reading buses, uh, specifically the talks of these buses being used. It, it refers to the Winners Park and Ride will use it. That doesn't sound to me like it's an express, really. Um, TDP Shawl, which we know will use it. Uh, and the TDP Park and Ride. Uh, so it's assuming those are separate buses, and they're not, are they? They're going to be one bus. Um, there's no separate buses from the Park and Ride, is there? Um, it could be. I mean, at the moment, the Park and Rides are obviously the ones we have and been approved, and they've got their own business cases to support themselves in terms of they're sustainable. Um, the services currently run. This feature obviously adds to the benefit of the Park and Rides in the sense that it can obviously increase its journey time from Winnish through to Sutton's Business Park and then on through to Reading. And I think that's the, the benefit. All of our park and rides have been assessed and um, passed in terms of business case for delivery um, on a standalone without the MRT. The MRT obviously just provides or I call it an express busway, which the terminology we use, use, um, obviously delivers the added feature to the end of that to increase its journey time and make it more inviting to users. I've got other questions, but I will let other people have a go and come back thank you. Thank you. So, I just wanted to come back on that point about the MRT being a train system. We, we know that the A33 MRT, uh, which runs along the A33, isn't a train, it's, it's a bus lane. So I don't think reference to, to trains in that document, if it was there, it was necessarily means that it has to be a train. Okay. Members, who else would like to go? Rochelle, and then Adam. A couple of statements. <coughs> a couple of things. Uh, questions about the lagoon or marshland. According to Wikipedia, a marsh is a wetland which is dominated by um, herbaceous rather than woody plant species. And it's a transition area between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Now, the question about that is if you say it's a managed wetland, how is it going to be a managed wetland if it isn't connected to anything other water? Where's the water going to come from that's going to be marshy? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. This is the area underneath the 